All right, hello. So an update on my son's condition. George's UTI is being treated with antibiotics. Pain with Tylenol, and he has intermittent bleeding, which will result in another blood transfusion while they try to find it and fix it. There are naturally tensions um, over these things, but they are not uncommon with transplants. I find refuge and peace with God within myself, and I magnify His works in these things. All good comes from God. These tragedies are the result of our world being polluted and sick with the consequences of sin. God grants His blessing and gifts and talents to the evil and to the good. The evil take credit for themselves, for the beautiful good gifts God grants them. This mirrors their father Satan, who does the same thing since the time of his fall from heaven. He lies to himself and others. The evil in the world imitate this despite God's loving gifts and long-suffering patience. Those that are of God and reflect his glory in all of his grace and good gifts and works give all glory and honor and worship to God. God allows these things because without a free will to do good or evil, it is impossible to have love. Love is a gift that requires the free will of a glad and giving heart. It cannot be forced or coerced and be true. Accepting our repentance of our evil deeds and thoughts demonstrates God's long-suffering love for us. He is all good and loving. The errors of our leaders and teachers and caregivers and ourselves help us to see the truth of these things. When things turn out well, despite our flaws, it is God we see working in our behalf. And he is magnified for us to see so that we may glorify him, knowing him, and by this, come to know him more and more, and draw near to him to purify ourselves, so we may reflect his light and be unburned by the fire of his love, and see him as he promises us in his scriptures. The righteous suffer along with the unrighteous until the wheat is separated from the chaff. We cannot see or understand unless we seek truly with humility, and God grants us to see. The same is true with understanding and all the other gifts of God. They are God's to give and not ours to demand. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy. Amen. So, with this in mind, I give the update of my son's condition. As of this morning, 13 January, 31 December, 2024, Saturday, he has not slept well for three days. He and we are exhausted. He has had a fever come and go up and down with regular diarrhea. He was checked for a bowel instruction, but he doesn't have that. Blood cultures were done on all his IV ports, and they were disinfected and rebandaged or removed. All came back negative. He was found, though, to be suffering from bloating gas, which was causing abdominal pain and pressure, and affecting his breathing and BP and heart rate at times. They also found a urinary tract infection. They added regularly scheduled simethicone to treat the gas and more antibiotics for the UTI, which is currently resolved. Another IV port was removed. Three more to go. Machines are slowly being removed one by one as he slowly regains functions. However, he will occasionally have to do dialysis. He's going to have to do dialysis again this afternoon. A new nasal pharyngeal tube was put in to allow meds to be given with less stress on George, and this helps to keep his BP down, which has been dangerously high at times. He gets anxious taking meds because it or any food for that matter because it makes him nauseous and then he ends up throwing up and it makes him miserable so he's been a little frightful or scared of taking anything by mouth so they put the tube in to help him so that he doesn't freak out so much it doesn't stop him from getting nauseous but he hasn't figured that out yet BP uh, Mainly, the main things I'm concerned about is he needs he needs rest for his psychological well-being and his healing because you heal when you sleep. 
and it's hard to heal when you've got a negative attitude and you're under a lot of stress and uh, and then clearing up the digestion so he can eat um, and get stronger um, his BP, his blood pressure has been dangerously high at times. All background opioid drugs have been removed and replaced with, with regular Tylenol, except his pain button. Um, but it's a boost that he hits whenever he needs um, extra pain support, but they've reduced the amount that he gets every time he pushes that button. And, it only, and it, no matter how many times he pushes it, it only works once every 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, however, his hemoglobin has steadily declined since his surgery and is now critically low. So he will get another blood transfusion, maybe multiple, as they look to find the bleed and fix it. Uh, I talked to the surgeon and basically the body will normally uh, take care of that itself if it's not severe. If it's something more serious, they can go back in and fix it, but basically they just want to support the body while it fixes itself. He thought that was oversimplified, but when he repeated it in his own language, it basically said the same thing, so whatever. Um, so he'll get more blood transfusions. George is still making progress, but it's not without its setbacks and struggles, as most worthwhile pursuits in life have as part of the process. Prayers are still needed, as they always are for all of us, not just George. The amount of support has been overwhelming and humbling and reminds me of the movie It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. George seems somewhat parallel to the archetype of the innocent lamb that suffers and gives people hope in God's great love and mercy. It has reminded many people of the purpose of life and its source, God. It has healed old wounds and brought peace between people who had been squabbling over petty things and has drawn countless people to church to pray for him and for ourselves in the world. These are all great blessings. We have been given charity from multiple sources we cannot repay except to live good lives, much like the character Private Ryan. Forgive me for using movies to simplify the descriptions. The lives of the saints are much better examples to draw from and follow, but less well known. I hope to help remedy that in time by paraphrasing as many lives and writings of saints as I can in the time I have left. My mother and I were talking about these things this morning via text, and she said, and I quote, God's perfect plan is my prayer always, but my heart hurts for the pain that we're all sharing, and read George most of all. It is not surprising that God chose him to bring enlightenment and surrender and great faith to those who love him. My gospel reading this morning was Matthew 9, 18-38. Jesus healed various infirmities to enlighten the people, but those he healed, and those who loved them, had suffered a while prior to their restoration. So while my heart hurts, faith is greater, and certainly God, who blesses us with faith, is right and wise and good. For I know the plans I have for you, which he's quoting from the Bible. The Lord declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Jeremiah 29, 11. And that's the end of my mom's uh, statement. So these wise words of encouragement from my mother and my own insights and observations granted me by God lead me to believe that this is the why of these things. Heroes and champions are not honored simply for participation alone but the greatest trophies come from the greatest struggles, and even more so by God when suffered well to his glory. A prayer was given me, or given to me by a dear friend at church that was written by St. Philaret of Moscow. Perhaps he says it best, quote, Lord, I do not know what to ask of you. You alone know what I need. You love me more than I am able to love you. Father, give your servant that for which I am unable to ask. I do not dare to ask either for a cross or for a consolation. I only stand before you. My heart is open to you, and you yourself. See needs of which I am unaware. See and do according to your mercy. Strike me and heal me. Knock me down and lift me up. 
I show reverence and keep silence before your holy will. Your destiny for me is beyond understanding. I offer myself as a sacrifice to you. I have no other desire besides the desire to carry out your will. Teach me how to pray, and you yourself pray in me. Amen. With blessings in the Lord. It's from St. Philaret of Moscow. And I think that's an excellent way to end this update. So, God's will be done. Uh, everything is going as well as to be expected. Uh, actually better than expected because a lot of people wait weeks or months for transplants and we got ours in two days and a lot of people have a lot more serious complications but by the prayers of a lot of people all over the world things have been going pretty well and most of the complications we're having are normal so glory to God for his mercy please keep praying for us and pray for yourselves and the whole world because everybody obviously needs it there's a lot going on in the world so I'm just, or George is just a small part of that, but it's a microcosm of everything. So yeah, glory to God for all things. Thank you for your time and consideration and all your prayers. God bless, over and out.